Hi, everyone. How many of you use online banking? Hands up. All right, and how many of you use online banking and Bitcoin transaction site? All right, and how many of you use uh, browser extensions in the same browser you do online banking? Okay, and how many of you are willing to install my extension into your browser? Good choice. That's my name. That is where I work. And that is what I'm paid for. And most of the people think that what consultants are paid for at big four companies. Do you know the name of the guy? What's his name? It's a Nessus monkey running Nessus. These are the things I'm uh, very proud, uh, especially that I can be a part of a great team called Goulash. Last year at the Cyber Olympics competition, we finished at the second runner-up position. And uh, these are the contacts where you can contact me. This is what I do 24 by 7. This is what I do when I'm not hacking. And this is what I browse on the internet when I'm not hacking or not watching hacker movies. And I really hope that you will enjoy my presentation. At the beginning of my presentation, I will talk about my browser extension I have created, what it's capable of. And after that, I will talk about the client-side protection systems I have uh, investigated whether they can uh, protect the users against malicious browser extensions or not. This will be uh, stuff like internet security suits, sandboxing technologies, and so on. If you are later interested, you can watch a hell of a lot of demos about my browser extension on my YouTube site. And uh, you can also check my presentations on SlideShare. And you can even download my code from GitHub because uh, my uh, browser extension is open sourced. You can freely download it and contribute to the code. I'm just waiting for the pictures. And it's OK. Uh, I think uh, most of you remember how an average Internet Explorer 6 looked like in 2004. I bet all of you would go crazy about those crappy extensions. Do you remember that irritating purple monkey dancing in the corner of your browser? It was one of the very first browser extensions which spied on users' browsing activity. Exponential diagrams are a must-have in IT security presentations, so here you go. I have downloaded and analyzed uh, the publicly available malicious browser extensions from uh, Mozilla. And it looks like that uh, most of them were created for spamming your Facebook wall in your name or injecting some ad into your browser and just stupid lame things. But uh, how does an average Facebook scam look like? How many of you use Facebook? All right. So you see interesting posts on Facebook like the funniest sex section or eat a cheesecake factory for free. But if you want to look at the content, there will be a tricky step which you don't know what will it cause on your computer because mostly they will convince you to install some browser extension which will have access to everything in your browser. But I do believe that browser extensions can be much more dangerous than just spamming your Facebook wall. For example, my extension, which I have created, works in a command and control way, 
which means that uh, it works the very same way as uh, zombie computers are uh, always looking for new commands uh, from the master bot servers. Uh, through my extension, I can steal your passwords, I can steal your cookies, which means I can still convent to step verification of Google. I can also steal all your confidential files from your hard disk, and I can also upload files to your hard disk. It can be a funny locket picture, or it can be a malware. And in Firefox and on Windows, I can even execute those binaries I have just dropped into your uh, computer. I can spy on your webcam, I can geolocate you, and I can even forge financial transactions in your browser. This is how it works. Uh, after the browser is infected with my extension, it uh, looks for new commands from my web server. And if there is a new command, it will execute it. But don't forget that uh, Firefox is uh, multi-platform, which means it can run on OS X, on Linux, and even on Android. And uh, after I have created my Firefox extension, I was thinking uh, about creating new extensions for new platforms. So I have both Chrome and Safari browser extensions basically doing the same thing, which I will show you in Firefox. But enough of chit chat. Right now I'm going to show you how my uh, browser extension works in a demo net banking application. When I'm going to log in to this demo net banking application, I will use password, but uh, I have to admit it doesn't matter what uh, kind of security is used during the login into your net banking session because my extension is already in your browser, so it can circumvent uh, things uh, more deeply. So here you can see that currently there is no extension installed into my browser, which is the victim browser. And uh, now I'm going to simulate that I have remote code execution ability on the victim computer, so I'm just going to start the malware. But uh, there are uh, much more ways to install my extension into this browser. So I'm starting the malware, which is a meter and it connects back to my attacker server looking for commands and my extension is going to be installed into the browser which is a zombie browser now. As you can see my extension has been installed into Firefox and now the victim is logging into this demo net banking application and he transfers some money to an external account which is uh, $100 and after he clicks on transfer the destination account number has been changed in the background and it is just for the demo that you can see the real uh, destination account number because I can hide it from the user And when the user checks his uh, transaction history, he will see that the original uh, destination account number appears. And again, it was just for the demo that you were able to see the real forged uh, account number at the beginning. So this is how forging transactions works in a net banking application. Uh, last year, I have published all of my codes on GitHub and Mozilla blocked my extension in Firefox just after 25 minutes I have published my code and I really think it, that's great. But the problem is that uh, it took me less time to circumvent their protection because what they really do is just blocking an ID 
in Firefox. So if you look at uh, the ID above, it is currently blocked in Firefox, not, but not the one on the bottom. And uh, if you look at the link at the bottom, you will see that either the cyber criminals have found this problem in the protection system of Firefox, so they are exploiting it with ever-changing IDs in their extensions. Uh, Chrome had uh, its own uh, malicious browser extensions as well. So, for example, last year when you installed these bad piggies extensions, instead of hunting for bad piggies, you had to hunt for malicious browser extensions in your browser. But uh, one and a half months ago, Google announced that they will scan their official extension store more strictly for and looking, they are looking for these malicious browser extensions. We will see if they will success or fail. And now here's a little quiz for you. And the first good answer will be honored by two bottles of Hacker beer. And the question is, which company developed the very first Netscape plugin? Excuse me? No? Here's a little clue for you. Sorry? No? Yes, Adobe. You can pick your beer later at the end of your presentation. Funny thing is the fact that they are still unable to create secure plugins in the browsers, but whatever. Um, there is a rootkit in the wild since 2007 called Mibroot. I'm not sure if you know this rootkit, but what it does, it's uh, stealing money from online banking accounts, and uh, they were unable to attack the users of the Chrome browsers. So what they did, they developed malicious browser extensions, and after they infect the user's computer, they will install this extension into Chrome, and after that, they are able to manipulate the financial transactions in the background I just shown you. So after I have shown that there are so many problems with browser extensions, I thought that uh, I had to look for a solution. So there I went me, the brave hacker, to find the elixir against zombie browsers in the deep and dark forest of the kingdom of the internet. During my quest, I have uh, bumped into two axioms, and the first axiom warned me that if uh, malicious software is able to run on my computer, it is not my computer anymore. And the second axiom warned me that uh, if there is a protection system which can protect you against 300 different attacks, this means it won't protect you against the 301st one. So uh, first I was trying to test uh, browser extensions which uh, were thought that they might protect the users against uh, malicious browser extensions and I also tested uh, some sandboxing technologies how they can uh, defeat my uh, malicious browser extension like password stealing, cookie stealing and so on. I think that no script does what it promises but it never promised that it will protect a user against malware or another browser extension. And please don't forget that in Firefox, all the extension settings are like just a big happy family picnic, which means every extension can configure the other extension settings, which means, for example, my extension can configure the no script extension settings as well. For browser protect, it is again the same. It um, does what it promises, but it never promised to protect the users against malicious browser extensions. 
uh, when I tested Sandboxy, which is a popular sandboxing uh, solution, it was a big surprise for me, or rather a big disappointment, because what it does by default, it just prevents the process writing outside of the sandbox. Which means that if my extension is installed into a browser which is running in a sandbox, I can steal passwords, I can steal your sessions, I can spy on your webcam, and I can read all your files. And I was thinking, okay, Sandboxy was designed to protect uh, the outside world, what's in the sandbox, so let's see what happens if I drop a malware through my extension into the sandbox and let's see what it can uh, do or what it cannot. So in my next demos, when you will see the hack the planet, it's the attacker. And when you see unicorns and rainbows, it is always the victim browser. So now I'm starting my infected browser in this sandboxing. As you can see, my extension is already installed in this browser. And here you can see the command and control panel of my extensions, which I will show you later. And now if I click the upload malware to the victim button, it will instantly drop a mal new malware into the folder I just showed you, which is currently empty. And now my malware has been dropped through the browser extension. And now I'm going to start the malware, and which you will see will still run in the sandboxed environment. There it is. The malware started in the sandbox, so it is now communicating with my Metasploit session. And Guess what happens if I try to dump all the keystrokes through this malware in the same sandboxed browser? Stupid meta sprite. There you go, I, I was able to dump all the usernames and password. But again, that might be okay because we are in the sandbox with the malware. But let's see what happens if we start a new Chrome browser outside of the sandbox. And our malware is still running in the safe and secure sandbox. I'm not sure if you can see this, but there it is. I was able to spy outside of the sandbox. So this really means for me that uh, this sandbox is it's not really a sandbox at all, what we think when we are talking about sandboxes, because it is just uh, uh, keeping uh, the malware uh, writing outside of the sandbox and nothing else. And I can also do a screenshot of the user, what he's doing now. It is again outside of the sandbox. Oh. 
Okay, here you go. Here's the screenshot I was taking from uh, the victim client. So, uh, what I want to say that uh, I wouldn't recommend uh, sandboxing technology in itself for an average user to protect themselves against malware because it's not good enough. Our next big topic are the realm of internet security suits. And unfortunately, I cannot mention the vendor names to you, but uh, think about the biggest internet security suit vendors outside. You can think of like companies starting with their name, the letter S or K and, and so on. And again, uh, I promise you that it really doesn't matter because the conclusion will be the same after we test all those security suits. The first vendor, it detects and removes my Firefox extension on a signature basis. It's not because they are that cool, it's because I have sent my code directly to them. Please block this. But uh, the problem with the signature-based detection is that if I change one line in my code and I add one additional space in that line, the signature won't match and this vendor won't protect the users against my browser extension. And uh, what's another problem is that they were also shipping their own browser extensions which were said uh, to secure the user, but they were always two versions behind of the actual Firefox version, so it was always disabled on my browser, always. So my extension was able to circumvent its protection. The next vendor, it doesn't even bother uh, blocking my extension on a signature basis, although I send my code to them. But uh, I think what they are trying to do is a better way because they are promising a user a so-called safe browser solution, which uh, in reality is nothing else but a new clean Firefox profile. And uh, I have found two ways how I was able to install my extension into this safe browser, which is not a safe browser anymore. And uh, I have also contacted the vendor, but uh, currently they have not fixed it. The next vendor, it's my favorite one. A user asked on a forum from the vendor whether their uh, product will uh, block and detect the Xenotix Keylogix uh, malicious browser extension, which has been developed by Ejin Abraham. His talk uh, was scheduled to the same time slot, but as far as I know, he is not here at this conference. So the user asked uh, whether he will be safe or not against this malicious browser extension. And the, the vendor's response was so beautiful that we really have to analyze it word by word, just like a poem. It's so beautiful. The vendor starts with an immediate beginning, saying, no, it doesn't, and that's by design. What they meant about by design, I have no idea. But uh, they are also referring to some sandboxing. And although you have seen that sandboxing is not a very good feature by blocking malicious browser extensions. But in Firefox, there is no sandboxing at all. So I don't know what they meant about sandboxing. And last but not least, they recommend the users to detect and remove the malicious browser extensions by themselves. And there are two problems with this approach. The first problem is that I am able to hide my extension from the user, so the user won't be able to see that there is an extension installed into their browser. And the second problem is, why the hell should I buy their product if I have to detect 
and remove the malicious browser extension. So it has been hacked by design. I have also investigated other safe browser solutions, but they were just crap. And uh, I was a very, very sad panda to see that uh, there is no solution. When I finally bumped into the Avast Safe Browser Internet Security Suite, and uh, their safe browser was good enough that I was not able to install my extension into their browser. So I was thinking about new ways how I can hack their safe browser, and uh, now I'm going to show an online demo about this. I really hope it will work. This is their safe browser, and I'm going to close it now because uh, at the beginning we were not uh, hacking their safe browser, but uh, I will do some other tricks. Here you can see that uh, currently there is no proxy configured in the victim's browser. And as you can see, there is no trusted root certificate installed with the letter H. And come on. here you can see that my extension is installed into the browser. And if I click refresh on this panel, I can see that uh, it is already communicating with my uh, botnet server. Here you can see my test browsers. I was testing my extension. But first, I will click on demo. And just going back. Here you can see that there is no file currently here. But if I click on the upload files to the victim through the Bra Firefox browser extension button, guess what will happen? My malware has been dropped there. It's currently in a zip file, so I have to extract it. There you go, it has been extracted. And now I'm going to start this malware through the infected zombie Firefox browser. And here you can see a very good thing, which is a so-called reputational based analysis, which is really cool, I think. And it says that we didn't find enough evidence to identify the file as malware. So I click on continue execution because it was not a scary one. And I'm stepping away from the demo because you will see a security dialogue warning window pop up in just a couple of seconds, which has been accepted by my malware. And I think most of you might know where I'm going to. Let's see the system-wide Internet Explorer settings. Come on. What? Okay. So here is 
Honest Ahmed's Use Card Sense Certificates is a trusted root certificate authority. And there is also a new configuration file configured here, which we go I'm going to show you what it does. It's just a plain configuration file. When the user visits paypal.com, the traffic will be rerouted to my proxy server. And unfortunately, this safe browser is stupid enough to pick all the configuration settings by default, so I have to restart my uh, computer just to pick it up, all the proxy settings. And meanwhile, it's restarting. I think uh, we have uh, time for a quick question, if you have. Yes? Uh, users don't, they are, the safe browser is said, use only when you do online banking or shopping. And this is what uh, the vendors usually say. So if I'm navigating to paypal.com here, Here you can see that the identity of this website has been verified by Honest Ahmed's use cards and certificates, which I think it's good. And let's try to log in. Uh, please give me a safe password to log into this PayPal. Sorry? Hunter 2. I'm not sure if I'm getting it, but all right. And in the background, come on, oh, um, yeah, burp is stupid, so we have to restart it, I'm sorry. It never did it before. Let's try again. Hunter to stupid. Okay, I'm sorry, it's broken, but I promise that it it worked. Just it's burp and Java and stuff like that. All right. So uh, my uh, recommendation to the vendors who tries to do some uh, safe browser solutions is that uh, you shouldn't trust the local root certificate authority as you have seen because this Ava safe browser was using basically uh, Chrome which is using the Internet Explorer settings and the certificate authority lists of the uh, whole computer which as you can see can be uh, already configured by the malware. And uh, if you do a safe browser, you should uh, protect the proxy settings, browser files, browser settings. You should never use old, outdated browser. I have seen many of them. And it is the best if you disable all browser extension in this safe browser. And my recommendation to the users are that you should never use browser extensions to protect against another browser extension. And I also recommend all of the users to install and update their antivirus because uh, it is not 100% that it will protect you, but still 90% is better than nothing. That's what I believe. Our last and big topic is the so-called endpoint financial fraud prevention and anti-k-logging applications. 
if you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, these are, uh, again, safe browsers, which are recommended by big financial institutions, and they say, download it, use it while you are uh, browsing the internet and doing online banking or shopping, and you will be safe. Uh, again, I won't mention any vendor names, just in case in the demo it's necessary, but the conclusion will be the same again. Uh, I'm going to start with a demo. Uh, what these uh, endpoint financial fraud whatever systems does, that uh, usually they promise that they will protect the users against Zeus or SpyEye. You have to know that most of the time these banking trojans do some API hooking stuff. And I'm gonna show you what does it mean. And uh, these uh, protection systems promise that even if they cannot detect the malware itself, they can protect when the malware tries this API hooking stuff and they will block it. And um, in the case of the Zimana product, it is able to block this API hooking stuff. And, but after that, I'm going to show you that it won't block my malicious browser extension. First, I'm going to show you that I'm not cheating, so UAC settings are set to default. Uh, unfortunately, I had to use an older Firefox version, which means I mean six months old, or I don't know, because they have changed their API, so currently I don't know on which API I should hook, but I'm pretty sure I could do that. And currently, my browser extension is disabled in this browser. And as you can see, currently the Zmana protection is turned off. So just now I'm going, I can show you how this API hooking stuff works. I'm going to use this uh, API monitor tool, which is basically doing the same API hooking like uh, Zeus or SpyEye. And here you can see that uh, I'm going to hook on the peer write function call on the NSPR4 DLL. And whenever Firefox is uh, calling that particular function, I want to know all the details about this function call. So let's try this with PayPal again. Please tell me a new password because the last one has been compromised. Come on. Sorry? Welcome at OHM. All right. Oh, luckily, it's not working. But let's see. No. Yeah, you know. There you go. So this is how the malwares are uh, stealing all the passwords and credit card information from browsers using the same API hooking technology. Now let's close this API monitor tool and start Zimana protection. I promise you it's not a fake malware, fake AV. At first I thought, but no, 
it's really a real protection. And now let's start this API hooking stuff again. Now I'm getting a very scary alert saying that something is trying to inject code into one of your applications and could gain full access to your system. Do not click allow unless this is a legitimate application. So I think this is a great alert. So currently we will be a good user and click on block. So this is how Zeman avoid protect against traditional malware. But let's see if it can protect the user against my malicious browser extension. Now it's on. And let's see what we can see on my master server. First, I'm going to delete all the previous stuff. It looks like it's communicating. And here you can see that this post info section is currently empty. That's nothing there. And please give me a new password. The previous one has been compromised. Excuse me? B R O D admin. All right. And it will take about 10 seconds until I receive this information. Let's see. There it is. So this is how my browser extension can steal uh, passwords and cookies even uh, when the user is protected with Zimana. The next vendor, it promised an awful lot of thing. But when I tested it, it turned out that although it was disabling every extension in Internet Explorer, but not in Firefox. And uh, I have contacted the vendor and they have sent me a new version of their uh, protection where every extension was disabled. And I was very happy and I asked them, great, when you are going to publish this? And they said, never. And I said, okay, why? And they said that their plan is that they will detect if there is a malicious extension in the wild and they will only block that specific extension in Firefox. And I said, okay, you know what you are doing or not. Next vendor. Uh, when, they, when I have tested it in January, they were using an old vulnerable Firefox version and I was also able to install my extension into their safe browser. So I have contacted this vendor again and uh, they uh, solved the problem. I have tested the new version, which is public. And, uh, I have also tried the same SSL man in the middle attack I just showed you in the AVS safe browser in this product and it was not working because they were protecting all their settings. So currently uh, I have no idea how I can hack this safe browser but uh, to be honest I have never spent a minute thinking about new ways to hack this but maybe when I will have some more free time, I will be able to do hack it as well. The next vendor showed me this uh, warning when af right after I installed uh, my, the protection on my system. And I, first I thought that great, they were detecting my malicious browser extension, but unfortunately not, they were detecting that Simon Tech was already installed on this computer. Whatever. They also promise an awful lot of things that uh, they will protect the users 
but in reality, my browser extension is able to run in their safe browser. So what I have learned from this is that uh, I believe that I was searching for the solution basically in the wrong forest because I believe that the client-side solutions are doomed to fail. And uh, that's why I believe that uh, next time when I'm testing these all these online banking solutions, I have to look at server-side protection systems. And this is my plan that I'm going to test those when I have some free time. So thank you for your attention. Do we have any questions? Excuse me? What? What is your motivation for doing this? Hacking stuff. I did this all in my free time, at the weekends, at the night, in the morning. Yes? You, see, you are concentrating mostly on uh, what's wrong with the uh, security solutions that do not stop it from running. But if you uh, disregard your first axioma and look at the, uh, the model of the browser uh, that is uh, implementing these uh, pl these plugins via some some kind of uh, APIs, isn't the access control for the stuff that is running the problem, and not the stuff, not the fact that uh, your browser extension should be stopping should be stopped from running. You understand my my? Um, what I have heard, I'm not sure that. Uh, the browsers are uh, defining APIs for doing this. Mm -hmm. And that's right. So I was not uh, doing any exploit or vulnerability. This is all legitimate functions in the browsers. But I have heard the word money. I don't understand in this context. No, uh, what, what, what I meant to say is that I don't think uh, the first axioma that you, that you, that you put down is uh, is correct. I think uh, the problem is not that your software can run, but the fact the problem is that when your software runs, it has too many privileges. Wouldn't be, wouldn't there be uh, possibilities to uh, to allow it to run, but to uh, diminish the, the privileges? Yeah, that's a hard question, basically, because. Um, I was talking with uh, Mozilla representatives and also with Google about this whole problem. And what I currently believe is the best way is what it's Google doing, that they have their own extension store and uh, people are not allowed to install extensions outside of the extension store, only in developer mode. And I think that this is the way to do things because if you want powerful extensions, then you need APIs. With this API, everybody can do stuff like that. Um, the sandboxing theory works on the process of your malicious or your malware installing stuff beforehand. Is there anything you can do um, automatically, or does that because? I assume the browser would need to install your extension first. Uh, there are many ways to install my extension into the browser. For example, the Facebook scam, you, if you remember, uh, people are looking, people are browsing Facebook, they want to look at a uh, video, and there suddenly a new pop-up comes out that if you want to watch this video, install this extension, and people will click on it. And that's basically the problem. I'm not sure if I have answered your question. Um, no, but I didn't phrase it properly, I think. Um, it's the, if they've got the extension installed, is there any automated processes you can run? Because you now just basically click buttons to make it install things. But I assume you can do that automatically or have a script running that does that as soon as they come, uh, they show up in your list. 
so um, yes, the user has to click on something if there is no exploitable vulnerability on his system. That's right. Does it, because you showed in the demo, you clicked a button to install other things in addition to your malware, through your yeah. malware. Yeah, 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 yes. Is it possible to do that automatically? Yes, 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 definitely, yes. I thought so, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Any more questions? Well, I guess that's it. Round of applause for, uh, for our speaker. Thank you.